to the channel. Computer says no. You're watching the very first video in the series on stack-based buffer overflow exploitation in a Windows environment. Look, I've not long woken up and I'm re-recording the first video in the series, actually. So if I sound like I'm half asleep, uh, I definitely am. So the video series will be broken into several smaller videos and is intended to be watched as a playlist. So it is available in a playlist. Be sure to check it out under the playlist tab. In this video though, I just want to go over uh, what you should expect to find out if you do watch the series and also touch on what software you will need to get set up if you wish to follow along with the exploitation. For those of you uh, who aren't very familiar with stack-based buffer overflows, I will be doing a little refresher in the next video so you can get up to speed with all the concepts that you really need to know there. I will also show you the intended use of the program before we exploit it and uh, take a little look at the actual source code so we can see where the vulnerability lies within it. <clears throat> uh, from there, we will take a look at manually fuzzing uh, the vulnerable application a little bit. And uh, we will also look at finding the offset of the ERP register in uh, Immunity Debugger with the motor module. Uh, utilizing pattern create and pattern offset. We will also be locating a suitable instruction to place inside of EIP, such as a jump ESP instruction. We will then take a look at finding bad characters that we wish to exclude from our shellcode, and we will ultimately generate some shellcode, popping a calculator, and then popping a reverse shell between a Kali host and the Windows 10 host uh, that is running our vulnerable binary. So speaking of the vulnerable binary, for this uh, series, we are actually utilizing uh, a binary that was created by Justin Steven, this guy here that you are seeing uh, on his GitHub. So Justin is a fellow Aussie based in Brisbane, uh, and you can check out his page here at uh, github.com forward slash Justin Steven. Now head over to his uh, do stack buffer overflow good repository. And uh, what we want to utilize for this series is this executable. But I will say this, you need to get this repo. Um, and you really want to have a read of his tutorial and his slides. Uh, if you're serious about, yeah, learning more about this stuff, buffer overflow exploitation and uh, binary exploitation in general. Justin really knows his stuff. This is from a talk uh, that he gave at CrikeyCon. Um, I certainly learned a bunch of stuff um, going over these slides when I found out about it. <clears throat> so make sure you do clone that repository, give him a follow on Twitter or what have you. Um, yeah, it's worth doing. So what else will you need? Uh, Mona, you want to head to Corlan, uh, github.com GitHub forward slash Corlan and make sure you grab uh, the Mona module. Just follow the instructions and uh, basically you want to paste it in the PI commands folder inside of the installation directory of Immunity Debugger. So while we're on the topic of Immunity, you want to grab yourself a copy of Immunity and place that inside of your Windows machine. I'll be using Windows 10, although I have also tested this stuff on Windows 7. Uh, and I'm thinking it'll work just fine on Windows 8, but uh, nobody likes Windows 8. Either way, grab yourself a copy of Windows so we can put Immunity and our uh, vulnerable executable in there. You'll also want a copy of Kali and uh, some virtualization software. So once you have all those things, you'll be uh, good to go and follow along with the series, all right? Uh, that's all for this video, guys. In the next one, we're going to do a little bit of theory and uh, have a look at a refresher um, on the basics of the vulnerability, talk a little bit about the stack and CPU registers. It'll be fun, so I'll see you in the next one.